What's up guys, Jay Yudlovsky, Focus Photography and Design, helping you focus on your photography. They want to talk about how you can download, enlarge, and print an image from Facebook. So let's get into it. Okay guys, so uh, a friend of mine had reached out to me and uh, asked me if I could download a picture from one of their friend's Facebook pages because they wanted to print it and uh, give it to them as a gift. I thought that's a great idea, so uh, I asked them, you know, what picture they wanted, they told me, and uh, I'm going to just show you how you can download it, and, uh, you know, a lot of times some of the pictures you get off of Facebook are pretty low resolution images, so I want to just show you what I did in order to be able to print it as an 8x10. So here on the Facebook page, uh, I have the image up that I want to uh, download and, and uh, enlarge. So the first thing I do is uh, I want to see how I can download the image. So on this picture here, being that it's a cover photo, it doesn't give you the option to download the image. So the next best thing that I can do is uh, right click on the image and just do save image as. So I'm going to go ahead and save the image. Um, I will save it on my desktop for now. And I already have a copy of it there, but I'm going to just replace that. So now that I've got the image, I can bring that into Photoshop and try to start uh, making some changes so that it would print good as an 8x10. So let's head on over to Photoshop. Okay, so we have our image here in Photoshop and uh, I want to get started on cleaning up the photo a little bit and just making it a little bit better quality so that way I can print it uh, as an 8x10. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to click on the oops click on the uh, little lock there so that our background layer is unlocked i want to make it a smart object so i'm going to right click uh, on the layer and i'm going to convert to smart object okay so now that i have it as a smart object i want to resize the image so i'm going to come up here and i want to start by making my canvas size i want to make it 8 by 10 so width i want 10 height i want 8 I'm going to say OK. New canvas is smaller than the current canvas. Some clipping will occur. I'm going to proceed. That's OK. Next, what I'd like to do is scale my image. So I'm going to stay on our background layer. I'm going to go image, image size, 8 by 10. And I want to change the resolution here to 300. And I'm going to press OK. Okay, now you can see it zoomed in a lot, or it looks like it zoomed in, but it actually blew the picture up, increased the resolution. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to press Command minus to zoom out. Now I know I have my canvas here that's 8 by 10, and obviously my picture doesn't fill that, so I want to crop in on the picture a little bit. So what I'm going to do is keep the layer zero click, Command or Control T, and I'm going to scale it up. Just past the edge of the, uh, the canvas there. Okay, I'm going to adjust it, you know, how I think looks looks good. Make sure we get all the horse in there. Looks pretty good. And hit enter. Okay, so now we have good 8x10 size of the image. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make a copy of the background layer. Or layer 0 here, so I'm just going to call this uh, original. So I want to make a copy of this. I'm going to press Command or Control J. And now what I want to do is, uh, let's see, keep this as a smart object. I want to come up to Filter. And I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur, which is uh, whoop, in the blur, Gaussian Blur. So what I want to do is try and smooth out the image a little bit because you can see how it was very grainy uh, because the quality of the, the image that I got from Facebook was not very good. So I'm gonna come over here, do the Gaussian blur. Uh, I wanna bring this back to around four pixels. So I wanna blur it, but not too much. I don't want it to be completely blurred. Uh, so I'm gonna hit okay there. Then I'm gonna come back to filter again. I'm gonna go to noise and dust and scratches. So what this does, this just helps it clean, it, clean get cleaned up a little bit more too. Um, so I'm gonna actually leave this radius around six and the threshold at eight. And just so we can see what it does here, if I crank up the dust and scratches, you see it's again, it just smooths it out. Um, a little different than the Gaussian blur, but smooths out the image there. So I'm gonna back it back down to uh, six. And then I'm gonna hit okay. 
So now if we zoom in on our image, we can see it, it's a little blurry. If I turn off that layer, you can see the original uh, was kind of textured there. So this kind of smoothed it out a little bit, blurred it a little bit, um, just to help kind of clean up the image a little bit for when we do print it. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to make another copy of the original background layer, Commander Control J. I'm going to bring that above the copy I just made. And uh, the next thing I want to do is try and bring back a little bit of uh, sharpening. So I'm going to keep this as a smart object and I'm going to run a high pass filter on it. So I'm going to go to filter, then I come down to sharpen. Oh, I'm sorry. I come down to uh, other and then high pass. Now on the high pass, you can see, you know, what the high pass filter does. It gives, it gives you defined edges uh, and helps sharpen up the image a little bit. So for this one, I'm going to use about a 9.7. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to overlay. So you can see there it's a little blurry and with the high pass applied again, it kind of sharpens it back up a bit there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave uh, that layer as it is with the high pass. Next, I wanna add a new layer. So I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna fill this layer uh, with a 50% gray. So I'm gonna hit shift delete for fill. I'm gonna come down to 50% gray. Click on that I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, so now we have our 50% gray layer here. I am now going to go to filter, noise, and add noise. So the reason that I want to add the noise is so that I can have a similar grain across the whole image as opposed to having the, uh, the, the texture that was on the original image because you're still going to see some of that texture that's there now. So by adding some noise, it kind of helps just blend everything together a little bit. Uh, you know, this picture is never going to be a, a sharp picture like if you took it with a camera from today. It's just not going to get there. So by adding noise and kind of making it, you know, an even grain across the image, I think that will help, uh, when, especially once, it, once it's printed 8x10. So here I'm going to add uh, about 15% of noise and make sure I have it on Gaussian and monochromatic. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to come over to my blend modes. And I'm going to click overlay on that. So if I turn it on and off here, you can zoom in a little. So there's without the noise and there's with the noise. And that looks like a little too much actually. So we can try different blend modes. Let's try soft light. That kind of brings it back a little bit. And then we can just lower the opacity of it too a little bit. Maybe 70%. Now you're never going to get the clarity in the, in the face and in the details of some of these, uh, the things in the image just due to the original quality of it. But you got to remember too that you're never going to be right on top of the picture looking at it uh, for the most part. I mean, you're going to be some distance away. Okay, so I'm going to leave the noise like that. Let's zoom back out to 100. Maybe even drop that back a little more. 59%. 60%. Okay, so we'll just leave that like that. So the uh, next thing that I want to do is go to the levels. I want to add a levels adjustment layer. So I'm going to come to levels, click on that. And now you can see here on our levels, you know, we have some dead area in the white zone and some dead area in the dark zone there. So I'm going to just pull that up a little bit, pull down the, the uh, brights a little bit. And then I can adjust the middle, uh, the middle value here a little. So I'm going to go like that. And you can always try clicking auto and see what it does for you. We'll give it a shot here. Okay, let's just turn the layer on and off. So you can see it goes from kind of a little gray washed out-ish to uh, having a little more contrast and being a little clearer. So I can just leave that like that for now. That's fine. And you can always adjust it however you'd like. Okay, so... With that, I think we're pretty much done on uh, the, the changes that I would do to get it ready to print as an 8x10. So just to go back to the original here, um, I'm going to hold Option and click on the, the bottom uh, layer visibility icon down here, the eyeball. And you can see there's the original, and then there's uh, after our, our edits. So we didn't do anything too crazy, just tried to smooth out the image a little bit and uh, make it good to be able to be printed as uh, an 8x10. Okay, so now that I've finished all my adjustments, I want to save this image. I'm going to go File, 
uh, export and I'm going to do export as bring up the dialog box here so for here uh, I'm gonna leave this right here as uh, 1x I'm gonna come over here my format I want it to be JPEG quality 100 you can leave your pixel size here that should be fine based on what we set our canvas at which was 8 by 10 colors okay convert test RGB and then I'm going to do export all now this will give me the option to save it. I'm gonna save this as sled enlarged. Export, and that's it. Now you have your image file that you can use to print. You can take it to a print shop, send it to uh, wherever you may get your photos printed. If you have a printer at home, you can print it also. Okay, and here's a uh, picture of the image after I printed it. Uh, it's, you know, it came out pretty good. You know, if you had your face really close to it, you know, within a foot or so from the image, you could definitely see the uh, the texture and the grain on it a little bit. But once you backed up more than two, two and a half feet, it, the image looked pretty good. It didn't look uh, it didn't look blurry. It didn't look um, too textured. And uh, I, I think it came out uh, really well. Um, I know the person I printed it for was very happy with it. The person who received the gift was very happy with it. I hope that this video helped you out and showed you how my process was for downloading an image from Facebook a low resolution image, uh, making a few simple changes, enlarging it, and then being able to print it as an 8x10. It's really not too hard, and uh, most of the time you'll get good results with a few simple changes. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you stopping by my YouTube channel and watching my videos. Please subscribe if you're learning something and you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out on my channel, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.